loving Kissimmee's year into this gangplank. He literally cannot set anything up on there. We got the Solar Flare coming out. We have the Flash from Pay Time to avoid the center, so they don't get actually get stunned. However, they're still going to get caught out anyway as they are taken down. And we have Silas taking the calling, and he just absolutely shreds through his health bar. As this is going to be a nice push in on this bot lane. Especially while bringing out his own calling as well, trying to take out the mini wave. K1ZZ trying to get the King Slayer. The Flash is going to keep him alive, though. Gua over the wall to stay out of this upcoming fight as the four members of Team Azure they're just engaging in on this hard cannon barrage comes down but that is gonna unfortunately oh, fight too many targets look at that though the damage coming out though is unfortunately Gua stepped inside of it so did Leona getting really really low B try getting uh trying to chase down Beshi Wap not quite able to find this target he doesn't have ultimate anymore and that is going to be the shutdown to the and now cold blaster who's probably waiting for the silence is like oh no I've got to actually wait until they group up before I ult in there yeah, no, it's, it, and there's no damage there, obviously. Graviel uh, has that Leandris finish. There's the ulti. Oh, there we go. We have the Malphite ulti coming out from Silas as he jumps right in onto Cold Blaster. The damage he does means that the CC that K1ZZ suffers and takes tower shots does nothing. So that is a used that. hijack that's going to be just out of commission for this fight. Cannon Barrage is going to force the rest of the team Azor off. They are kind of taking the same... Oh, no, no, I'm saying they're taking the same path. They do not. The King's Divide comes out, and they force this fight to start. Unfortunately, that means that the Dragon goes down. However, they're picking up the kills. They're getting the damage out as Team Azor's actually turns that around. Wow, talk about a crazy one. That's a number of targets, and so that's going to be RHC get uh, jump flashing in there as well. Culling managed to take out multiple members. We aren't seeing a TP come out from Silas until cool. just, uh, like, right now. He decided to back instead. TP is coming out. He's going straight for the mid lane. Baron oh. goes down. Double kill going out as well. What the the fighting on Team Astro, they're able to get all of that despite <laughs> all the way things went. And we're looking at... Is probably the most entertaining team to cast. Uh, they are just just casting the league throughout the entirety of this split has been fantastic. Been Team Azor is something a team that I know a lot of team uh, casters look forward to. Uh, now it's the macro isn't the best, and uh, that's part of the reason why the closeouts are often uh, all over the place. But B, B Try has managed to cement himself as quite the star, and I think he, if if their team manages to go far, it would be a lot on his back. Uh, their biggest strength is they are, have a very strong never give up attitude. Uh, they're always pushing. They're always fighting, trying to fight back, find another avenue in. And, you know, it's very commendable. And I think that is a strength that they can carry over into a longer series. All right, folks, and welcome back. Talk about an explosive game one. Team Azworth pulling out a win against Sergio Alfonso. So we're going to have to see uh, what kind of prayers are coming up, and we'll see uh, exactly how they plan to respond. Uh, I am really just, I'm still hyped about that last game, uh, Escape. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, it was one of those just crazy explosive ones. Obviously, you're looking at just the seating. You're expecting COF to come into this one ahead. Um, just immediately looking at the bands, I like that uh, GP uh, being taken away on this rotation and Mumu getting taken away. Um, and then uh, they've left the Kai'Sa open this time on the side of uh, Church of Alfonso, uh, opting to get rid of the Zir instead. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that was actually, like, that's exactly why we're seeing the, the Gangplank bang come out, because they're like, we're taking away your Azir, you're not getting, it's like, well, okay, fine, you're not getting your Gangplank. Yeah, just just kind of almost almost petty bands at that point. <laughs> uh, Thresh first round, I think, is almost a bit of a waste of the the blue side first pick. Obviously, you have access to MF, you have access to Graves. I don't know if Beatrice plays Lee Sin, um, yeah, but there's a lot of good um, first pickable options here. Irelia is another mm -hmm. big one. Um, so I think losing the the first pick there on the Thresh is going to be kind of not not the greatest uh, for Asworth, but it's a Ash picked up. So looking like a bot lane dominance, looking like the uh, Stratford Church of Alfonso this time. I, I feel like it might be Team Azor trying to figure out exactly when to draft, and they already kind of are like, okay, so we know we want Thresh for sure. Let's just go ahead and grab it right now. Although, theoretically, you could be playing the... Okay, so we know we're going to pick Thresh, and we don't mind getting counterpicked in that lane because that's going to be our losing lane anyway. Yeah, uh, so we'll Jenna? just go ahead and take it. Uh, wow. Do, and Ash, Jan that's really interesting. I like it because that world... She is very strong right now, in all honesty. Uh, who is Jenna or... Uh, Jenna. Yeah. Jenna. 
Yeah, no, Jenna, I think it could be really good. And obviously, where Ash really thrives in lane is just having the, first of all, the range advantage. She can get that hit on you while you're CSing. It's kind of free. Um, but then having the movement speed advantage. And mm -hmm. Ash really wants to sit at max range at all times. And she can do that because she's slowing. But if she also has that extra movement speed from Jenna, it could be very nice. And I think having that 100 range deficit over a pick like a Kai'Sa could be really problematic. But that is one of Gua's favorites. And they do decide it to pick up. It is going to be something that's kind of tricky. Like, I really feel like, again, we're going to be looking in that bot lane. They did really well into the uh, Lucian Nami lane with a, yeah. a lane that theoretically should have had a hard time. So they may be kind of banking on that. And so they're hoping that Church of Alfonso just doesn't have quite as strong of a uh, uh, Ash Janna game. So we'll have to yeah. see exactly how they choose to respond on it. Yeah, and then Diana picked up. Obviously, that can be flexed between mid and jungle. Could go either way. Mm -hmm. Um so far, I think that really Church hasn't shown a lot for, for what they want to go for. Uh, Ash Janus just says that we want to play pick comp. We want to play vision control. Uh, obviously, Jan is very easy to get wards down with because she's so fast. Ash has the E available. Able mm -hmm. to get very good map control. Tracking that what could be a Diana in the jungle, um, it'll be very good. And so what I'm expecting to see what they're going to want now is just get something that can scale, get something that can uh, you know kind of take advantage of that and kind of ward off the early game. Kiana picked up instead. So they're going to... Yeah, picking up that Kiana is going to be kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, the matchup is like for uh, against Diana. I kind of feel like because they're both melee champs, they're going to want to be fighting anyway. So I, it, it might be a skill based. I'm willing to bet that that Kiana is actually going to be in the jungle. She's been such a uh, such a strong pick. Um, again, like looking towards worlds. Obviously, those two metas are different, but she's still a strong champion regardless. Um, I'm interested to see her picked up because she is quite a technical champion. Mm -hmm. um, she's she's quite challenging to play, and I, I like the the adaptation from Church getting rid of that Silas round two, um, mm -hmm. and Victor getting taken away as well. But I'm willing to I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bet that the both that Diana and the Kion are going to be looking at the jungle right now. Yeah, and in the jungle they do have a little bit more of an even matchup. In the uh, mid lane, it tends to be I think it goes more over in the favor of Diana. Um, so that'll be just really interesting uh, in general. Although it does look like, sorry, I'm misreading it. Kiana has the much higher win rate uh, overall. More CC, more available uh, toolkit. And a ridiculously fast clear. Yes. Um, Diana used to be uh, one of the fastest clearing junglers. Obviously, she's been taken down from that pedestal a little bit. Uh, that's where she lost a lot of her um, kind of presence in, in uh, competitive play and in solo queue. Uh, she doesn't really just instantly clear jungle camps and go and gank you for free now. Um, she has to be a little bit more calculated. She loses a lot more time in the jungle, which means that everything she does needs to be a little bit more precise. Uh, Wukong, Orn, uh, lots of top lane bans taken away so far, and the set picked up blind for Church of Alfonso. Yeah, so that blind set is kind of interesting. It's definitely uh, them kind of saying, look, we're, we're going to be fine up in this. Like, I want to just go ahead and go in on these fights, so come at me, bro, sort of a thing. Uh, yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see what K1ZZ pulls out against it. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, obviously, set can be flexed. Um, they could be looking at that Diana saying, no, I think we think we're going the, uh, mid lane with that. And obviously, set is going to be very strong into that. Set's very comfortable to walk up on just about anybody in that mid lane, throw out the take a good trade. And Cassiopeia is one of them that uh, it definitely sets very comfortable in that matchup. Uh, doesn't really have any dashes that get taken away from the W. Uh, so if that set is being flex picked, that's a very good option for Church. Yeah, no, it's going to be really, really interesting to see exactly how, uh, like, cause, and with that Cassiopeia we could pick up, we are very guaranteed to see uh, the giant in the jungle and then the Aatrox getting taken Aatrox instead. Mmm, Aatrox. Uh, just in general, Team Asworth once again going for the fighty fight comp. Uh, I do like this uh, Cassiopeia pickup. It will allow them to basically ground the opponent and not have to worry about them, like, being able to get away essentially it's much more of kind of like holding them in place and just the uh ap poison damage is going to be really really nice for them all right pick kale pick kale corky's another nope. good option uh i, I want to see some kind of scaling like we were saying i think that that is what they need to really round this out i think they have lovely team fighting they've got great vision control inside of church of alfonso um Asworth has a team that wants to go in and, and that's what they've been good at i'm gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how his mate's gonna play this from the range um because that's really not what we're used to seeing from Asworth at all uh, but I, I think right now, if Church can just play to their win conditions, let that set kind of bully top lane, uh, let that Corky get ahead, let the Kiana get some vision control, I think we're going to see this game really start to tilt uh, around like level 13 for these guys. That's where they're going to be strongest. Um, but it, it's uphill battle. They're down 1-0. Yeah, it, it's going to be really nice to see uh, how Church of Alfonso decides to play this one. I'm really liking their comp. They're kind of leaning a little less into Team Asworth's play style while still trying to kind of respond to it. Uh, so you do have some of that later game scaling, you know, the quirky, and hopefully we'll be seeing some good packages because that has always been kind of the defining factor of is it going to be a good quirky game? Welcome yeah, it, it, that package can be so make or break. Uh, 
<clears throat> we saw, oh, what was it? Uh, there was quite a few quirky games in the uh, the RLS CFG games mm -hmm. from Route, and Route had a very good performance on that quirky. Uh, big packages, uh, and then that was able to um, to to take over the game into so much damage in those later stages. So yeah, it's going to be a big on that for RHC. Um, and alongside that, obviously, Ash does scale into the later stages of the game very well, whereas Kaisa is very team comp dependent. Uh, she has a lot of dive to go with this game, so it could be good for her. Um, but I think where we're going to really see this game open up, it should be the mid game of, of those course with TAS. You're never sure. Could start as early as two minutes. You know, it really, really could. Um, I, you know, I always people uh, say that they don't like the the Aatrox rework, and I understand why because it does kind of like delete the original champion. Um, but at the same time, like as a concept, I love Aatrox's new kit, newer kit. Yeah, no, I, I think it's really nice. Um, when I first actually started playing this game, uh, Aatrox was one of my go-to picks, uh, and I really appreciated how that kit worked. And it was actually quite interesting to you know be one of those champions who has to siphon health and be in the mm -hmm. middle and then obviously that has been kind of removed and it's unfortunate to see that but the kit that they've given him um obviously a lot more relevant uh has a lot more cc in the kit which is a good deal for top lane it's got a lot more wave clear um so it, it's overall it's been very good for him but it, it, yeah like you say it's unfortunate to see that champ just kind of removed mm -hmm. pay time getting kind of low uh on that blue buff uh they did not use smite though so that is kind of like Seems like they're holding on to it uh, for this Gromp here. That just I'm kind of surprised to see them get as low as they did. Yeah, and that would kind of point to some inexperience there. Obviously, Kiana is, uh, you know, if you're starting blue side right now, you really should be starting Gromp a lot earlier than that. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you want to get kind of the, the HP done, get the advantage there. It doesn't use it on Gromp either, but... Uh, you know, I mean, look at the there. camp clear already, like just where they're at. Diana's already moved to this top side while Kiana's just now starting Wolves. So they'll have the same number of camps done, but it feels like the map presence is going to go a little bit more in the favor of Diana. Yeah, no, she's already just about to finish those Wolves up. We're going to see that rotation of the top side. Should be a fight around Top Crab again now. So where we have to look from there, um, <clears throat> Crab is going to be on the, uh, the closer to the mid side of the map. Uh, by the time those two champions get there. So it's going to be, where's that mid-priority? Right now it's in the favor of Hisme. It is in the, the favor of Hisme, and so uh, we will expect the Cassiopeia to kind of roam up to assist, uh, which will be kind of interesting. And j then just take a look at this bot lane, which we've been watching for the past couple of minutes. Uh, Beshi and LTY doing a really good job of pressuring Anbo and Gua back into their own turret, but at the same time, that's kind of where Thresh Kaiza want to be. Uh, yeah. because like then they don't have to worry about getting ganked they can if they get an engage it's great for them so and the health advantage really needs to be bigger for ash right now and it's difficult because you have that thresh so close to the tower it can be really threatening if you do end up running into a hook running into a flay um mm -hmm. but it, it, it's very important that right here where ragu is just walking up and getting these autos that can't happen in this lane uh but yeah. you need to be getting those auto attacks in making sure that you can deny that cs deny the xp push them back but instead they're going to get that bot priority top crab already given over to the diana and mm -hmm. Paytime just conceding it and going bot side. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like we do see that the, the crabs have kind of been traded across the map. Uh, we did see Kiana. I think they spotted out uh, b and decided not to fight them early. They're going to wait for the Kiana to scale up in order to be able to fight in these later fights. Uh, the CC that her ultimate will bring is probably going to be the most important thing about it. The hook goes out a little bit wide. Yeah, no, and that's the threat of that bot lane, obviously. Kai'Sa, uh, one of the strongest bursts of any ADC at this point in the game, obviously matching up there with, um, with Tristana. Uh, so one quick play could be a big deal. I say that, and B-Trace just starting to walk in. Maybe looking, obviously, is on a ward. They have detected that. Woo, look at the damage as RHC's Hellfire just kind of gets burned away. Yeah, and that, that's, the, that's the difficulty with that Cassiopeia. Obviously, she has to fight uh, those mana issues as well. Because uh, trades like that are going to cost her a lot, so she's not going to take okay, one. Well, easy. <laughs> Pulled back before he got the punch off. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it just so far, it's been a, a very kind of slow, calculated play, and that's what Church wants right now, is they want to be able to take this one slowly. Um, obviously, they are going to be facing into that Cassiopeia and that Diana in the later stages of the game. Looks like oh, they're looking for There we go. Though. We got a nice engage here in the top lane. Cold Blaster getting a nice bit of damage off the Facebreaker. Came out a little early, flashing away to keep K1ZZ alive. Uh, K1 is just kind of continuing this. It looks like he's sort of half baiting it. Yeah, no, and nothing happening. Obviously, um, <laughs> Kiana not being able to land the water queue there. Uh, it's where a lot of her uh, prevalence comes from in the jungle right now. It's just how much CC she has available. And deciding to help Cold Blaster push in this top lane. No Ooh. Rift Herald available this early, so I'm kind of surprised that they're going for this. I don't know if they're trying to buy Cold Blaster a recall, but the reaction from that is put the jungler bot side, look at Dragon. Five minutes has happened, and this could be uh, advantage over to uh, Tass. 
Yeah, th this is a huge advantage for Tass. They've got Pryo in mid and bot lane. There's no way for uh, them to really respond to Diana solo taking this Drake. Uh, so they're going to have to basically send everybody down there. Paytime just trying to rush as quickly as possible, but I don't know if they're going to be able to make it in time. And we already see that... Uh, Ka uh, there we go. Kaiza, Anbo, Paytime going in. They do see that the Drake is really low. Smite's going to come down. Blue team's able to secure it. Fight is actually going to break out. Exhaust going on to Paytime in order to kind of keep them uh, going. The huge Cassiopeia ult misses as RHC gets caught out. And unfortunately, Taz just don't have the health bars in order to keep going. So they're going to have to use a lot of resources to try and escape. We do see Gua having to flash out as well as Cassiopeia. So that is, again, just so much burn for that Drake. I feel like Church of Alfonso kind of came out ahead on that one. Yeah, it was really surprising because Paytime was in some seriously deep water there, but decides to take that water, uses it to his advantage, gets a three-man stun uh, mm -hmm. across TAS, and is able to help that, um, you know, turn turn the fight around, uh, get that CC down, get everyone in position, and then Beshi Wap at this stage in the game. Like we were saying, you cannot run from uh, Ash and Janna. It, it just doesn't happen. If you have to retreat against them, then you're running into issues. Ash has the range. She's going to slow you down. Janna's going to keep her sped up. And they, they exactly that. They, they try to kite back. They try to get out of the fight. And you get hunted down. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to point out. So during that, that Diana was only level four and Kiana was only level five. So we like are just seeing like a major uh, level deficit, just kind of like relatively speaking to where everything is. Uh, it's like that was a really early fight in all honesty. Yeah, no, and, and it really looked like that should have just been a, a clean play from TAS. They, they had everybody there for Dragon ahead of time. Um, Paytime got in there, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, and obviously... I, I think it was up. just because he, he let himself get too low. He tried to solo it too long. He's not a Warwick. Warwick can solo the Dragon to level 4 yeah. relatively easy, <laughs> but Diana is yeah. a little bit more tricky. Yeah, no, Diana at the level 4-5 range does actually need both smites to be able to solo that uh, comfortably, even from full health. She really does need to have everything available to her, and, and that takes her quite low. Uh, and obviously, the, the late uh, reaction from TAS to get there in time to try and protect that Diana who's been on the dragon um, does end up costing them, but it's only one kill over. There's still a gold lead uh, just on the CS in the favor of Tass, and a lot of that is coming out of this bot lane. Huge pressure from Ombo's hook. Yeah, and it, it's going to be a huge... Oh, look at that nice haymaker coming out as we do see K1ZZ taking a lot of damage. Uh, that grit just isn't really built up yet, so Cold Blaster not doing as much damage as he will be later. Uh, you can't be taking that right to the face. And he does have that Bramble Vest picked up, so even though he does have the CS deficit in the top lane, he should be very comfortable to take trades up there. Uh, obviously, Bramble by LCY there. Quick way to shut down Aatrox. Uh, getting rid of that extra healing, which is, again, what that champion's very based around. Um, the extra armor for Set is nice. Obviously, Set loves health. Uh, so that those traits should be going a bit more in the favor of Cold Blaster, but he has to actually be taking them and not just getting chipped away. He has been, like, hitting just on the edge of those knockups for Aatrox. It's been, like, it's kind of depressing just seeing how close he's getting and just barely missing. Yeah, and and that's that's uh, that's a sign of the good play, though, from, from K1, is just keeping the Set tethered away getting those those light pokes in because obviously really can't take the all in unless he has a big health advantage sets very comfortable to lose half his health bar i like this play bot lane there's the that, ulti that in. Nice dodge it goes right in between that is a split miss unfortunately but it's not gonna really matter to get the double knockout from the tornado on getting really low and that's gonna be the ash just shredding them I... apart look at that damage beshi going under tower to pick up the double kill yeah, you cannot run from those two in that bot lane. It's not possible. There's no way. Uh, Agua tries to stay to keep Onbo alive after the ultis uh, come down, but you need to try and get out of there as soon as you can. There's no um, six available, I don't think, for the Kai'Sa yet. No, uh, so no escape there. Uh, and just get run down by this Ash and Janna. It's good on them to just take the dive in the bot lane. They know they can pick up that kill for free. And uh, they have more kills over to COF. Oop, good stun by Cold Blaster. He does manage to pick that up right there. We got the nice tether right there. And that's going to be the Haymaker pulling him forward. K1ZZ taking damage, but he's going to come out ahead on that trade. Yeah. And just, you know, more signs of that top lane. Uh, the set, I really think, should be just taking advantage of the fact that you have the, the Bramble Vest finished. Uh, makes it very, very comfortable. You have that healing reduction. You get the damage back. It's it's so nice. And I think right now, I like this roam from mm -hmm. LTY to, to both be there for Rift Herald, but also to kind of pressure this mid lane. They have that TP burnt in the top lane, but Dragon spawning soon. This could be cross map. Oh. oh, there we go. We got the ulti coming out from K1ZZ as he has to try and use the World Ender just to stay alive. Uh, and unfortunately, that does mean that Pryo is going to shift over to Church of Alfonso, which means that this uh, Rift Herald is going to be threatened. Yeah, and then they decided not to take it on the side of COF because of that um, uh, Scuttle Crab being taken. They decided they'd be, they'd, uh, be seen... They didn't really have what they wanted to go for that. And instead, they're going to rotate, put that vision down around Dragon. And I think that they could get something going there. 
They they definitely can. You got 20 seconds before the Drake actually comes up. We do have TPs available for the Aatrox. Oh, oh good stun from the Ashero managing to hit that. That's going to be the double knockup on Anbo. And unfortunately, he, there's nothing he's going to be able to do to escape. We have the TP coming out from Aatrox. He's going to get stunned, though, by that ice shot from the Kiana. Tether's coming out onto Beshi as he tries to pull him back. Unfortunately, Beshi is able to run away. Gua having to use the ultimate in order to try and stay alive, giving himself a shield as they're just trying to run away. And look at that great package from RHC. Yeah, he's there just in time. Obviously, doesn't pick up the kill, but completely cuts off any reinforcements, any escape route. Um, and, and and that's really what that looked like was just Tass not respecting Kiana. She has so much CC in the stage in the game. They don't have the vision down. They're overpressuring Beshi, obviously. Ash can take an engage whenever she wants. And you chain CC that Thresh down. There's no chance. But then Gua walking up just too far, not respecting how much CC that Kiana can put down, pick up a second kill. And the dragon goes over to COF, and now we have, a, we have a, almost a 2k gold lead. And we talked about Taz uh, appearing to be a totally different team than they were at the beginning of the season in that last game. In this game, Church of Alfonso looks like a completely different team from the team they were in the previous game. I think that they realized, wait, we have to respect Team Astroth. We can't just let Ooh. it happen. Look at that. Anbo getting a nice death bringer. He is able to hit uh, oh, the no. chain down. That's going to be LTY getting brought exceptionally low. That is going to be B-Try picking up the kill. <laughs> what a re! I love that VJ just throws it, uh, throws the Q down, and LTY trying to make their way out of there does get caught by it. it on the flash, there's flash burn for Janna. There's sums out of their bot laners, and really, even though this bot lane three kills for the Ash, there's going to be plates picked up. Gua's is doing a much better job on the CS department. Um, Veshi's just been zoned off a lot, missing a fair bit. Ooh, been really having a flash over the wall. That's important. Yeah, flash down on that Diana. Obviously, the ulti is also down, so they don't feel comfortable taking that fight, but it looks like they're still going for it. They're, they're kind of inside of the Dragon Pit. Beatry does not have ultimate. He's walking straight into Beshiwab, taking a lot of damage from that, getting stunned by that Kiana, but the Lantern does manage to save him. Unfortunately, Gua is going to be taking a couple of crystal shots. And that right there, oh. we have Beatry jumping right in onto Beshi, gets the shield off, but that's a lot of damage that they're soaking up, and they're going to go down. Supreme display of balance, just shutting down everybody in that river, just getting everybody completely uh, out of the way, and Beshi comfortable to walk up for a 1v3. Uh, doesn't manage to pick up the kill on Gua, doesn't manage to pick up the, anything on Onbo, but Beatray just taking the re-engage, trying to take that, uh, what seemed like a good fight, and suddenly Kiana over the wall, and there's more damage from that. I think this Kiana pick has been instrumental for Church of Alfonso so far. Absolutely. The, this has been allowing them to do so much because you're getting that CC off with the ultimate, and just it's been absolutely insane. Um, and unfortunately, Taz is just, they, they've been taking these fights that are like on a knife's edge, and unfortunately, every single time they've been cutting themselves. Yeah, no, and, and it's just been on that Kiana that's been making the differences in these fights. There's been some big ultimates, some big Qs. Oh, Veshiwap just walking out of there. Um, but on top of that, they've also got a very fed AD carry now. Um, Ash is going to be able to uh, just push down a lot of damage, uh, and that's going to be good for dealing with these frontline champions, these champions who want to dive down. Um, Kiana being able to peel very effectively uh, with the ulti, uh, same with Janna, able to peel very effectively. And uh, these backliners are going to be so safe for Church of Alfonso. I think any 5v5s right now, especially going into this third dragon, going into you know future Rift Herald, it's not going to be safe for Tass. It is going to be very, very risky, and unfortunately, this might be the game where Taz just has to kind of go like, okay, we kind of messed up. Uh, we've lost the early game. They're only down like 2k gold, though, so it is still a very close game, so they're kind of in the exact same position uh, that Church of Alfonso was last time around, so we'll have to see if they're able to turn it. Uh, and all of that gold, relatively speaking, is on the Ash, so that is kind of like, that's not your hyper carry, but she is definitely a late game carry. Yeah, no, she's very comfortable in those late game scenarios. I think there's a little bit of on pay time as well. But of course, as Tass, you, you can keep your head high. You still have the Diana for late game. You still have Aatrox for the, the mid late. You have Cassio. And Cassio is able to take over games. She does so much damage from a ridiculous amount of range. It's going to be absolute insanity when she actually starts getting out onto the field. Look at that. K1ZZ not going quite for the all in, but getting a decent amount of damage. Uh, the Deathbringer stance. Yep. Diana, probably looking for this tower dive. This is going to be really, really interesting. Yeah, deciding to go into those Krugs first, get those shut down. No, it does, it does have ultimate available right now. There's no flash um, on the on, on B-Tray, but flash is available for Cold Blast. Just to see how they decide to take this. Is just stalling that wave in, waiting for those Krugs to get finished. Looks like Paytime's trying to make him play on the bottom side of the map. Might see he he is point. looking for it. He does have the Rift Herald, so it could be something that they're looking forward to. We do have B-Try just kind of walking down there. There we have the oh. Supreme Display of Talent coming out. It's going to come a little bit short. We have the Flay as well in order to continue the disengage. Unfortunately, that's going to be the Cage uh, slowing them uh, down, but it's not going to be too drastic. And because Kiana's down here with 
the uh, Rift Herald and Dragons up in 50 seconds, that's going to be a huge amount of pressure they could kind of do just to force them away from the Drake. Yeah, both plays end up flubbing out, but it's a better position right now for Church of Alfonso. This is where you want to be at this point in the game. You want to be on the spot side, getting this tower down. This is going to be tower over to Ash. Um, yep. and I, I, ooh. Ooh, not quite able to find a connection right there. Uh, this is just, it's a nice bit of skirmishing going on in the bot lane. Meantime, think... in the top, we have the World Ender coming out as well as the Rift Herald is slowly being pushed into this bot side tower. The dragon's coming up. So this is basically Church of Alfonso just kind of pressuring everywhere to keep the uh, Taz occupied. Yeah, no, and they should be able to pick this dragon up. They might be able to find a kill on his May first. If Paytime wants to walk in, does have the stun available. He does. He throws it out. Does manage to connect. Unfortunately, that's mm -hmm. going to be his May able to walk away. Look at the damage Janna does with that W. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. It probably hasn't maxed at this point. Has that con or the area available? Um, going back to that initial play on the bot lane, because we've had so much action between now and then. Um, the uh, kind of we were talking about at the beginning of the game. I was saying that maybe that Kiana doesn't look exp uh, like perfectly practiced. Clear looked a little bit scrappy, and I think that ultimate was another good sign of that. Just throwing the ultimate down the middle of the lane doesn't doesn't target a wall with it at all. It just put it just the only thing it could have done there was really push Gua further away. Um, and not to say that Paytime's playing this badly. It, it just looks like he has to think about what he's doing on his champion and not what he has to do in the game right now. Uh, and obviously, it hasn't been hurting them too badly on the side of COF because it's been doing so much. Um, but that could be instrumental in those really tense moments. Is Paytime able to do what Kiana needs to do? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting once we see these 5v5 team fights. Although, it just the nature of that ultimate and how far it pushes them back into the walls, it, any fight that takes place inside of the jungle is going to be in the favor of Church of Alfonso. Or River, because uh, obviously or the River. big stun from Kiana is, is such a big deal. Around those objectives, this is where Kiana needs to play. She's a very objective-focused jungler, not for the same reasons as somebody like Anunu, where um, a very powerful smite able to clear camps very quickly, but she can win fights single-handedly in the River, able to take those dragons, able to take her childs and barons. Um, and that's where Church of Alfonso needs to be picking their fights uh, mm -hmm. as the game goes into the later stages. Yep, and see, that's the thing. And that's what Taz, I feel like, is playing for at the moment. They're like, okay, it's fine. We're just going to keep on scaling up. Look at the CSs on their side. Practically all three members are a comfortable three digits, um, while at the same time, Corky is really the only one who's, like, super far ahead. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's just a nice bit of gold, which is what the reason why we're seeing the gold levels basically be even. It's only 1K, despite the fact that it's 1 and 6. Yeah, no, and I think that it's it's kind of showing how dominant Ombo and Gua were able to be even from behind the, the fact that Beshi has not picked up as much CS as you really need by this point in the game. Um, I say that Ombo even causing pressure mid lane, was that? Yeah, okay. Yep, Hookness. yeah, he's throwing out that... It, it, honestly, it really kind of feels like Ombo's not looking to connect these hooks that he keeps throwing. They're all like threats, as in like, yeah. hey, look, look at this. I'm throwing out a death sentence. Are you going to get hit? No, nah, you're not because I don't want you to be. Yeah, no, not yet. It doesn't necessarily think maybe the kill power or just going for some kind of read there. Uh, really kind of a far cry to hit that hook anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I think uh, Gua so far keeping up pretty well in items, hasn't taken that back so far. Um, we're, we're still quite a ways off of the next objective spawning. Um, there's not going to be any huge rotations, I don't think, out of uh, tasks to put members top lane for this Rift Herald. Um, so I think we're mainly looking at these teams building up for the next dragon yep. fight top lane. Look at this, Cold Blaster trying to take this fight in the top lane. It does look like K1ZZ is at that point where he could theoretically take the fight if he wanted to. Um, but at the same time, I think he's aware of the fact that he's got a couple members of Church of Alfonso potentially roaming his way. Yeah, kind of a dark map at the moment, so they have to play it kind of safe. Uh, they do have the CF members in the topside jungle. There's no jungle to trade back uh, for Tass, so they're just losing out here. Um, Betray has been able to stay ahead in CS so far, though, um, as Paytime has been making plays around the map. Uh, some successful, some not. Uh, but that has given the CS lead over this Diana. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this right here is what I was talking about. We have LTY mm -hmm. and Paytime coming out of the set. Does bring down the ultimate, dropping it right on top of the K1ZZ. Massive amounts of healing coming out. Unfortunately, it's a 3v1 for an Aatrox. And the Monsoon's going to counteract that healing, though. And that is going to be a nice bit of damage that's coming out. And unfortunately, there's just too much for A1ZZ to deal with. But the amount of time that that 3v1 took? Poor Drinker is so broken. Core Drinker is so broken. <laughs> the, the nerf is coming out soon, but I really can't wait. That was insane how long uh, K1 was able to just sit on that fight. Three versus one. Um, th there was a brief moment there where it looked like he might even be able to take it, but the monsoon comes down, uh, able to keep um, uh, everyone on uh, COF safe. Um, but yeah, no, I think that Aatrox, even though it's just CS in that top lane, has been able to take down that tower. 
it, it's not a small Aatrox. That's a, that's a serious threat. You have to very much be thinking about that during fights, especially when you can survive that long 1v3. Yeah, and whenever the actual team fights start, um, we do see, see his damage coming out. It's going to be really interesting, not to mention the fact uh, that the Kaiza coming online is going to be really, uh, really deadly. Although I just I, I think it's interesting if we look at everyone on the side of Taz, it's one and two in all of their scores. Yeah, just about, except for his main, who's been kind of uh, surviving. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and keep on, uh, you know, farming. I got just this. getting that CS down. There's two items on that Cassio now. Uh, she hasn't, I would say about three items is when you really need to start thinking about her. Four is when it gets scary. Um, so it does have those two finished. Uh, yep. Of course, isn't going to be picking, isn't going to need to spend that extra 1.1k on the boots, uh, which is going to help keep her ahead. Corky, uh, you know, going to be able to match her at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we get later, uh, Corky's going to be more poker line in these fights, and uh, his mate's going to be just the scariest damage slot machine that you've ever seen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's gonna be crazy. We are gonna see. I'm kind of. I'm waiting for Corky to pick up a single CS, please. For the love of God, just hit one minion. Just be the first to break 200. This is the this is the caster's call right here. We need <laughs> one more CS picked up, please. Please, just go to the mid lane, pick up a pick up one CS. They are gonna start taking this Drake, and honestly, I don't think Team Asworth could do anything to really kind of counter pressure them. Uh, Church of Alfonso has really taken the reins of this game, and while the leads have been relatively close, it does seem like they're directing things in the direction they want to go. Objectives keep falling their way. Uh, it's gonna be really really tough for Taz to just kind of like once this. We keep talking about the five-man team fight starting, uh, but they haven't do it. And I swear, RHC is listening to our cast. Yeah, <laughs> refusing to pick up that extra CS. But yeah, no, I, I think there that uh, really, really, Tass can't. Uh, and the little celebration, I love it. Uh, <laughs> really, uh, I don't think Tass had the option to try and contest that right now. I think that they're too far behind. They need to wait for these kind of item break points. Now, obviously, they're on a timer now. They're dealing with that Mountain Soul coming up very soon. Fight deciding to take bot lane. Yep, right here. K1's easy. The world ender coming out. Look at the damage he's doing to Cold Blaster. He does tank that full Haymaker TP. He's coming out in order to kind of threaten uh, Cold Blaster, get him to force away. Uh, we do see that Aatrox was going to lose that fight. Yeah, and uh, that's the power you set right now. Want anymore. Yeah, yeah. Steel Cap, Brandle Best. That, that's really all you need to counter a champion like Aatrox. And uh, those two items are online. And uh, you may have a bunch of healing available. Uh, but that that gets completely shut off. Your damage from autos gets completely shut off. There's extra armor in there. And uh, Set has the extra passive regen to just sustain through those fights. So it, that's now the split push matched. But that does mean that you need to put Set in those side lanes. Yeah, once uh, Cassiopeia starts going up against that set, that's where we're going to start seeing his health bar probably start to burn away. Uh, we do see now that the gold lead has extended to 2k. They uh, Church of Alfonso finally starting to make pressure uh, in order to get Team Azorth to back off. Uh, and so that's going to be really interesting. We do see right here a little bit of a, a cheeky back, I think, trying to bait something out at the same time. Uh, we do see Beshi not taking that bait. Yeah. No, I think this is the point in the game where the, everything just needs to slow down. I think if uh, Tass, is, Tass is right to just try and put gold on their carries um, and maybe try and find a pick, but you really can't. You're playing into to very good vision control right now. Um, it's it's hard to outward a Janna. She's so fast, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to do that, especially when you have to match the fact that Ash is currently sitting here with three blue wards, effectively. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's difficult to find your way anywhere through the jungle right now, so I think it, it's just right for, for Tass. Try and equalize on farm. Uh, get yourself ready for a 5v5 around the soul timing, which is in two minutes uh, mm -hmm. and a half. And I think they just need to play as passive as they can, try and get these item breakpoints, um, and, and hope for a miracle fight. Because they're, as far as much as the items uh, are pretty even right now, just the position in the game, this is the stronger point for Churchill Alfonso. It is, and I think that their team comp just is a little bit more well-rounded, a little bit uh, able to kind of jump in on that. Again, we haven't seen a full 5v5 yet, and so like I think that's going to be the deciding factor, is whenever these two teams finally decide to go at it together. Um, I do like this amount of pressure in the mid lane. They're trying really hard to finally get one of these two turrets to fall, uh, and it, it's just it's the main kind of pyramid points at this point. Now, looking at the uh, just just looking at these item breakpoints that we're going to be coming up on, I, it's interesting for me to look at the Ash and see that Runance was picked up second. Um, mm -hmm. There's no healing reduction picked up there for the Ash, uh, which could have been crucial. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of healing with Cassio with um, with uh, Aatrox, which is the main target that you're going to be hitting. Um, but also opting not to go for any sort of shred. 
uh, at just going for the attack speed right now. And that's only really efficient if you know you're going to be making use of it. This, that is the very early runance. And so even though you have so much gold on that Ash, you're losing a little bit of the effectiveness at this point. Obviously, once you get another item finished, it'll be okay. Um, but that that feels like that's kind of a loss. Uh, mm -hmm. And that could affect the team fighting. And as and we roll in, clock keeps ticking down. That will matter. Yeah, it does kind of look like they're going for Bork, too. Like, uh, I'm not entirely certain if that's exactly what it is. Uh, they've got the Vampiric Scepter already picked up. Uh, and while we look at this mid lane, we do see that the Moramana has come out. And so, uh, like, that is going to be really, really nice for them. And a double Gore Drinker on their side means that they do have a lot of sustain on Church of Alfonso. And if we look, like, you're talking about healing reduction not being oh, picked yeah. up on the side of TOF. There's no healing reduction at all picked up on the side of Team Asor. Yeah, you're playing into two Gore Drinkers, two Shield Bows, and Janna. And there is no healing reduction picked up anywhere. And that is or going to be... Yeah, or a Serpent's Fang. Yeah, and no Serpent's Fang either. And the, the, it's so easy to pick up healing reduction. Obviously, Serpent's Fang, you need to commit a lot of gold to it um, just to shred those shields out. But healing reduction is so easy. It's 800 gold for anybody who wants it. And you have a bunch of damage dealers on your team. This would be a very good opportunity to try and you do try that. You try does manage to find Ooh. the Q, but unfortunately not able to hit it as the Whirlwind does stop it. We have the ultimate coming down. The Moonlight's going to hit. Monsoon is going to allow uh, Beshi in order to escape. Look at that supreme display of talent. Hitting multiple targets. Gua's going to get caught out, pushed away by Kiana. But that Cassiopeia ult's going to shut down the set freezing them in place, and that's going to allow Team Azeroth to get a lot of damage off of the Haymaker. is going to find multiple targets, getting a nice bit of true damage, and unfortunately, that is going to be Team Azeroth forced out of this jungle as Search of Alfonso takes them to church. Yeah, no, and that's that never-say-die attitude of Task kind of biting them in the back here. I think they had the disengage that they needed to take there. They get the pick on LTY. I think Gua's commitment was a little bit too much, but they needed to just try and disengage. Obviously, it's so hard to run away from Ash at this point, but you need to regroup. You need to get everyone back together, try and take that one kill, maybe walk it towards the dragon if you can. I don't think Church of Alfonso was ready to react there, but that's going into a blind jungle. You don't know what you're playing against. Um, and they had the advantage there for a little bit. They had the health bars. They maybe could have rotated that into Dragon, but instead they get four kills taken away from them, a bunch of deaths, uh, and Dragon Soul. Yeah, exactly. Losing that soul is going to be so devastating. Like, this is why, like, not getting a uh, soul or not getting a Serpent's Fang earlier is going to hurt Team Asword so much now because now that the soul shields are up, you've got Janna shields, you've got a uh, Haymaker shield. There's just so much on the side of Church of Alfonso that's just going to completely negate damage that they don't have a way to get through quickly. Uh, and it, because they've got so much sustain anyway, it's just going to be so hard for them to deal with. Yeah, big shields, uh, big healing. Oh, big Good hook. Death sentence. It does actually manage to find Kiana, but the Kiana is very, very tanky right now. B-Try diving in, getting multi-man stun on that Moonlight, but the Moonlight does very little damage at this point in the game. Aatrox getting a nice knockout. We have this uh, Tether coming down as well. Kiana's going to get shut down. That is going to be the set ultimate pulling K1ZZ away as he takes him into the rest of the bunch of massive oh. peacemaker hitting three members of Chaz, and that is going to be a nice crystal arrow to get the stun onto Cassiopeia, and that is going to be the rest of church of alfonso shoving it down this mid lane and that is going to be an easy baron call for them to make so close again for task they find a really good pick but like you say there's so much sustain from these guys there's so much peel available there's massive shields it's so hard to get that one pick and they do find a good opportunity the immediate engage from betray but the exhaust comes down they're unable to get that kill immediately and when they do finally pick it up here comes cold blaster with the set Picking up the, the, so much damage, just a ridiculous amount for, for the items he's got. Um, but that's that's the lead right now. That's that's what happens when you're behind. Um, and because Tass was forced to overextend so much to pick up that one kill, they give four back. Yeah, like that is just oh my goodness, that that's just nuts. Uh, and unfortunately for Team Asor, this could uh, spell the beginning of the end for this game uh, because I don't know if they have the time to build the items they will need in order to really be able to make it, and if they're even going to build them. I think right now what you're looking at is this is a game that uh, COF has to lose. This this has to be on them to really drop this game. They, they have such an advantage right now. You have a 6-0 Ash, you have a 3-0 Corky, uh, Kiana that's that's doing phenomenally, just 3-1, and 3-0 uh, on the set, you've got turrets everywhere, you have Baron buff, you're looking at Elder in three minutes. There There is no win condition right now available for Tass unless there's a mistake from Church of Alfonso. And that is what you have to look for. You have to get that vision down. You need to find those kind of lackadaisical, lazy moments where they're like, oh, you know, I'll just go the short way. I don't care if I'm walking through enemy vision, whatever. This is right. where you find those opportunities. But it's so hard when you're doing it into Jenna, into Ash. 
Yeah, because they just allow so much peel uh, for their allies. K1ZZ doing a fantastic job threading the needle in order to avoid that crystal arrow. Does manage to walk his way out, but that means he needs his that's, post. I was going to say, that that's top tower fallen. Um, and unfortunately, it's like bot tower is going to go as well. I do like this over aggression right here coming out from Team Astro. They're looking for an engage. Unfortunately, you just have the slows coming out. B try going a little deep. Uh, yeah, no, and it's it, that's so upsetting there for Gua because he lands the Prey Seeker, I, and and that is a... Oh that my is goodness, this right here, we got a nice fight coming out. That's going to be the backstop as the bot lane keeps on pushing. Cage is going to come out, but unfortunately there's no damage on the side of Taz, and they're not able to find picks. Church of Alfonso is just absolutely shut The Look at Cold Blaster getting hit by a lot of damage, but he's going to go down. Veshiwap is able to go godlike. Cold Blaster on a Rampage, and then that's a nice stun that's good, or a bit of damage coming out on Paytime as he manages to hit Gua right in the face with the Hula Hoop. But unfortunately, overall, it's not going to matter because look at the damage done to Team Asteroid's base in the meantime. Meanwhile, bot lane. I know, it's just absolutely crazy. RHC focusing solely on these turrets, getting a lot of damage off. The team fight's going to break out of the monsoon. It's going to mean that the rest of Church of Alfonso stays alive. This is going to be COF taking game number two as a revenge for game one. They're like, fine, you want us to respect you, we'll do that, and we'll just absolutely crush you. Yeah, no, and good on them. They only dropped three kills that game. They dropped two towers. Um, but more importantly, they don't drop their mindset at all. That was a very confident team. They were happy with their picks, and they came in and they played really well. And it's really easy to take one game like that and completely fall apart. And COF didn't. They came in there with a very clear strategy. They played exactly to their win conditions. Um, there was a few flubs here and there, but really not any big ones that mattered too much. And they're able to take that game very decisively at 31. Yes, and we were talking about how Church of Alfonso needed to make a change up in order to really come back from the game number one, and that is exactly what they did here. So now we're going to be looking for Taz to do the same thing. Uh, I do think that this is a very nice matchup between these two teams. It's going to be kind of crazy uh, to see exactly how uh, the next games play out just because of the fact that uh, Taz seems like a completely different team this time around. This was a very slow game in all honesty. Yeah, no, and they played exactly to where they needed to. I think uh, Church of Alfonso understood what they needed to do with this composition more, and more importantly, they knew what they needed to do about the threats that were available. They are able to shut down Gua in the bot lane, able to shut down uh, Hisme. They didn't have to do too much about K1 because that Aatrox was never, never able to get off the ground. Um, but this series really is don't go anywhere. We're going to be going into game three. Yep, we'll be right back. Oh, my God. Church of Alfonso has been fantastic to watch, fantastic to cast, very entertaining overall. I've been ecstatic to see their growth. And one of the teams that if I could give most improved to any team in the league, it would be these guys. They have performed in a way in ways that we have not seen other teams do so. So uh, they, they're my dark horse for the league. And I think that I'm very happy to see how they've managed to grow throughout this season. I, I think that this the other teams need to watch out for how strong these guys are when they do execute their uh, original their original plan or they don't get shaken up uh, uh, too much. Uh, these guys, to me, come off as the FOFs Gen G when these guys are on with their on their strategy and there's not a lot of wrenches into their mix. They're extremely good at closing out games and being extremely strong at finding. Uh, finding what avenues to make sure that they can win consistently. And that's something that I, I'm, I'm very excited to see how that transfers into a best of five series. I'm gonna have to bust it. <laughs>